What is up, my fellow Cheebits? Hopefully all of you are having a very good day today, no matter where you live, no matter what time it is, no matter how many days you watch this video after upload. It could be days, weeks, months, years, decades. I doubt that one, but regardless of how long you watch this when I upload this video or after, I do say I wish you all many, many great days and years to come. So anyways, with that being said, let's talk about the latest episode of Welcome to the Ballroom. So, seems like Fujita is trying to finally confront his major problem. Now, I do like his viewpoint on what he's trying to do, but at the same time, some of the things he's doing is incredibly flawed. And we're getting to see a lot of early steps to character development for him, and also Chinatsu as well. Now, Chinatsu wasn't really the major spotlight of this episode, I want to point out. She wasn't really in this episode much. It was mainly Fujita making the decision to actually better himself as a dancer because he realizes he's terrible he, he, he's really bad he's a really bad dancer but even though he's a bad dancer you could see that he's not letting that stop him he wants to move on up he wants to get better he wants to train and he wants to make sure that he can eventually go up against Hyodo and Shizuku that's what he wants to do and so when you see him trying to figure out what path he needs to take throughout this episode it made me truly happy I was like this this is nice to see some really good development taking place for him so so, anyways, as we know, Fujita's problem is the fact that he is the lead, but he's not really the lead. He mainly plays the follow when he is actually in the leading role, which is not good whatsoever. And we get to find out a little bit more world building about, you know, ballroom dancing, which I thought was very fascinating because it makes me wonder if stuff like this is actually in today's pro dancing scene. What I'm getting at is, is how couple dancing is handled. It's established in this episode that when you look at the registration for the couple dancing, the man that's being the lead role, he is actually the main athlete. While the person that is with him, his follow, the girl, she is actually just there as the pair, the couple partner. And so she's not really registered as an athlete. But on top of that, the girl or whoever is the follow they don't get a number on their back. They don't actually get the number showing when they're entering into a competition. It's the actual lead, the Mel, which I find very interesting because it makes you wonder if this series is actually a message for ballroom dancing because I have seen a lot of manga in a lot of series, not actually manga, but a lot of literature, try to send a message, a powerful message to certain things to try to get their message out there through their writing. And in this case... I feel like the way this episode tried to dive into the fact that it's unfair for both sides for the partner, like, you know, the couple, for instance, the one that's the follow wants the lead, it's very unfair for the follower. It's unfair for them because they don't have the exact same recognition as the lead, which I feel like maybe the message here of what the writer is probably trying to convey to the audience and probably trying to say that something like this needs to be changed because it's honestly not right. And in reality, it's not right for the follow not to get any recognition at all. Let me explain. What I'm getting at is, is that the follow puts probably just as much work as the lead. Now, it is established in the episode that a good lead can make a very bad follow really good because the lead just knows how to handle it. But I feel like that's very hypocritical in a way because I don't feel like it should just be one person doing all the work or one person making the entirety of the dance really good. I feel like it should be both pairs working together to perform a couple dance. I and mean, then they should both be scored based on both of their performances, not just one person's performance, which was the lead. And so I feel like Fujita, what he might be trying to do here and what the writer could be trying to do with this series to kind of express something is that it's not right for one person to do all the work or one person to take the entirety of the dance, even though it's a couple dance, because that goes against the message of couple dancing. I mean, let's look at what was already stated at the earlier parts of the series. Couples are basically married 
married partners. They're married. They've already went through like a marriage ceremony, basically, because when they're partners in dancing, they're married. And so, as I've already been talking about, it's kind of like when Fujita and Shinatsu, they became couple, a pair, they married, and then they both became one person. So, it makes no sense for only Fujita to get all the credit, or the lead to get all the credit, while the follow gets no credit whatsoever. And even if the follow is not doing that good, the, the lead can make the, you know, follow really good. And I, I just don't like that. I, I don't know. Something about that just doesn't sit right with me. And I feel like that's what the episode was trying to make me realize. And I don't know if I'm reading it wrong. I could be reading it wrong. But that's the way it looked like to me. I, I feel like there's a message going out there from the writer letting us see that something needs to be changed. Or at the very least, Fujita is going to try to change this. Because he even stated that when it comes to pairs, like, it's not about the lead or the follow. It should be about both dancing together. And I feel like that's what his style of dance is really going to be. Which I'm really looking forward to, actually. And I wonder if that's what is going to happen here. Fujita... He's already, you know, let us know, or we've already seen firsthand, that he's the type of dancer that's a really good follow. He's a lead, but a very good follow. And he needs to learn how to be a good lead. While Chinatsu, she needs to learn how to be a good follow, even though she's a good lead. And they both need to learn from each other. And since they're a pair, they can both pick up from each other and what they lack, which is really good. But judging by how Fujita is acting and all that, and what he said, I feel like he might develop in a way to where they will both swap back and forth. For instance, they want to perfectly balance them being displayed on the dance room. He doesn't want to, you know, be 100%. He wants to be 50-50. Like, he doesn't want to be out there with his partner and he's taking up all the spotlight. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to have his partner also recognized and acknowledged for her dancing skills, which is very interesting because it goes along with his character development and shows what type of person he is. As you know, in the earlier portions of Welcome to the Ballroom, when it first started, it was established that Fujita, he really liked it when everybody's attention was on him, and he likes it when everybody's eyes are on him, paying attention to what he's doing. He truly likes that. When the attention of him gets completely off and someone focused on someone else, he doesn't like that. And I find it really cool, and it fits with his character that he would want to share this attention with his partner because he knows how it feels not to be looked at, and so he doesn't want his partner to not get looked at as well. So, I like that. It, it shows that he is becoming a little bit different in terms of other dancers. He doesn't want to hog the entire spotlight. He wants to share it equally with his partner. So, like I said, that, that's obvious what's going on here. His dance, most likely, his style of dance, is probably going to be in a position where he's able to shift back from a follow to a lead, but also share everybody like the spotlight with his partner, for instance, Shinatsu. Anyways, let's talk about the setup, okay, for this upcoming arc. So, you have a dwarf Fujita, he actually finally breaks up with Sengoku. He, he's like, I'm going to another studio to learn. And this was a scene that was very weird to me, because I feel like there should have been a little bit more oomph there. And it was one of the weirdest scenes of the episode. I felt like it should have been a little bit more impactful or whatever, but it was still sad nonetheless. But Fujita basically said to Sengoku, I understand you're busy. I understand you don't have a lot of time to teach me properly, which is understandable. And also, I've basically been getting free lessons, so it makes a lot of sense. And basically, he's explaining that he is going to a legit studio. He's going to Marisa, and he's going to be learning from her. And basically, it's where they finally separate. They both have separated. He's no longer going to be underneath Sengoku and learning from him, which is a very sad moment. It is a sad moment. I mean, even though Sengoku isn't the best teacher and he hasn't taught, you know, Fujita properly whatsoever, it's still sad because Sengoku is what got Fujita into ballroom dancing, and there's a very powerful message there. So I do believe before everything is said and done, maybe one of these days he might go back to Sengoku, but for now he does need to go out of his way and learn the basics and have a proper teacher, which shows his passion to want to improve himself. Like I already said at the start of this video, he knows he's bad. He knows he's bad at dancing and he needs to improve. And he only has like a couple months to like a year to learn and get really good at dancing. So he doesn't have a lot of time. He needs to progress as fast as possible, which you see. However, sometimes when you want to get really good fast, things don't end up really well for you. For instance, it's like saying putting the cart in front of the horse. Marisa says you're not ready. Told Fujita you're not ready to be going to these high-tier dances. You're just not ready. And he isn't ready. But regardless of what his coach told him, he didn't listen 
and he's going to do his own thing without her permission. And this just smells of bad luck. That's what I get from this, because... Number one, like I already said, he's putting the cart in front of the horse. He is not thinking about this, clearly. He is wanting to progress and better himself as a dancer so quickly that he is not realizing that to get there, you need to take it slow sometimes. You cannot rush these things. You can't. It's like saying, hey, you know, I want to be a bodybuilder. I want to try to lift 100 pounds. Oh, I could start picking this up now. I want to start lifting 250 pounds a day later, you just, no, you, you don't do that, you don't go from, like, you know, point Z to point Y, or point Z to point, like, B in a day, you, you just don't go there, you don't go that high up, okay, you, you don't go up that high in terms of ranking just because, you know, you want to progress quickly, you, you gotta take it slow, you gotta progress at a moderate pace, you can't just rush in full throttle, and that's what he's doing, so I feel like this is gonna come back to bite him rather badly in the upcoming episodes. So that's about it when it comes to my thoughts on this episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, how you felt about this latest episode of Welcome to the Ballroom. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Please be honest in the comments below. And if you like my content, please subscribe. If you like my video, please leave a like. And if you want to support me for I can continue to focus on YouTube, go in the description of this video and support me on Patreon. It helps me out a lot. So I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.